What makes a house a home? Once again, we've asked the people of Scotland to enter their homes for Scotland's Home of the Year. Now, our judges are considering the top three from each region, choosing one to go through to our national final. Scoring them on functionality, distinctiveness and clever design are celebrated Glasgow-based interior designer Anna Campbell-Jones. She's been helping people design their homes for nearly 30 years. We're looking for great design, but also that special ingredient, love. World-recognised lifestyle blogger Kate Spears. She has over a million online followers. We're looking for somewhere that is architecturally brilliant, beautifully designed and has a sense of livability about it. And architect and university teacher Michael Angus. He steers the next generation of design talent. What I hope to find in a home is a place of magic, a place of wonder, a little bit of paradise on earth. In the end, only one house will be Scotland's Home of the Year. This time, our judges are visiting the shortlist from Perthshire and Central Scotland. And they're starting with a cottage in the conservation village of Strathtay. Artist Penny has created a picturesque home, affectionately known as Mouse Cottage, that embraces an eclectic mix of fun and functionality. It was a holiday home and it had been owned by an architect, so it was pretty, pretty good, but it was very old-fashioned. There was nothing mega wrong with it, but I just decided that um, I'm getting on, and I thought, if I'm going to do it, I'll do it all at once and be skint, and then I won't have to worry about doing ma ma major things when I'm, you know, when I'm older. You know, here I can paint my studio, do my gardening, I've got a veg patch, I've got to have my hens, and so it's all quite animated and good fun. <laughs> I think there's something unique about this house. There's just something about this house that's special. It's big enough for me to have my friends and family, and it's little enough for me not to feel at all like I'm rattling around on my own. I just feel I belong here. This home sits at the edge of a golf course and has used clever design to take advantage of the building's small footprint. It prioritises functionality and comfort, creating a cosy two-bed, two-bath home with a garden room workspace that's a celebration of Penny's style. This is the favourite spot and I like it because it's light and bright and airy and I work here and I like to be close to my garden. I can sit in my chair and I can look at the view. So I really think this is a very special place. The judges must now assess the home armed with only the basic facts about the property and its owner. Cute little cottage with an absolutely beautiful garden. Look at all that lavender. It's quite nice seeing all the timber bits added on, isn't it? Yes, and, and clearly legible as new. And everything new unified as well with this really nice sage green. And nice to see then the extension is picking up on that as well. Mm -hmm. And really lovely the way it's all been picked out with the, the white as well, isn't it? Yeah, and really well maintained as well. Even the stonework looks so clean. It's so welcoming, isn't it? Should we have a look? Oh, yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> a little place to sit. This is the dream kitchen. <gasps> oh, this is lovely. This is how a kitchen should be to me, just full of stuff. Everything's to hands when you're cooking. It's just reaching up. Yes, but it's, it's all useful. It all hangs together. It looks like it hangs together. <laughs> See what I did there? I mean, it looks lovely. And also, we've got sort of views through in three different directions from one small room. It makes it feel really light and airy, even though it's quite a low space with these sort of thick stone walls. Well, that's a big change, isn't it? Because originally it probably would have been pretty dark. Mm. You know, the, the floor wouldn't have been as light as this, and the walls certainly wouldn't have. But it's a nice take on that kind of country cottage kitchen, isn't it? Mm. With the obligatory scrubbed pine table, but then really interesting contemporary artwork on the walls. and a sleek composite work surface that runs all the way into the windows. Do you think that's jarring? Are you happy with that? No, I think it flows really well. And I think like that contemporary style, especially in the artwork and, and the way the kitchen is so sleek with the open shelving, I think it really, really flows. The one thing I really love is when you can actually see how the building's constructed. Yeah. I mean, you can see the joists 
And you can obviously see the stone. There's an interesting bit of timber work going on here. You can't see what that is. Is that a mouse? What? Do you think we're going to find more mice? Yeah, I suspect so. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. That is a piece, isn't it? <laughs> wow, very you know, really kind of urban art in a cute little yeah countryside cottage. And you can see the colours of the flowers in the garden. They all work with the colours inside. Mm. This, this constant awareness of where this cottage is. Yeah, we're actually drowning in colour in here, aren't we? Yeah, but I think with the grey kind of muted walls, that really works. Right? It actually probably works better than if they're white. Yeah. The, the artwork, especially with the white frames, even stand, seem to stand out even more. It's funny how effective that is, isn't it? Because it were white, I can totally imagine it being a totally different feeling. So I wouldn't fit in a frame in here. <laughs> but you might. Oh, For okay. a second, I think that's... You're disappearing into the picture. That's there the perfect moment. That looks great. <laughs> Red and green. Should never be seen. Should always be seen. Always. <laughs> Every day of the week, yeah. Michael. <laughs> oh, no. Go on your knees. <laughs> if you hit that, all the mice will fall off. Okay. <laughs> I am literally touching the top of the ceiling. Ooh. Oh, wow. Watch out. Your, your glasses are millimetres mm. away from the ceiling. Millimetres away. <laughs> there you go. Very cool blue theme. Very rigorously held to the scheme. Mm hmm. It's nice having that little window at the foot of the bed, isn't it? And it's a small room, but there's a lot in here. You've got a day bed, a bed, a window seat, an armchair, fireplace, storage. And it doesn't feel like there's too much in this room at all. That is very clever, the way it's been laid out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've found the heart. <laughs> oh, what a smarty pants. There you go. So smug. <laughs> no oh, new role as a detective is looming. <sighs> oh, I just want to let out a little squeal of excitement being in here. Uh, go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Seems like a place you just kind of retreat to. It's very tranquil. You've got everything you need. You've got some heat. You've got your supplies from the tea. And it just seems like, you know, you could come here in the morning and just spend all day here. Obviously, you're sitting in this place. Not look, We're not looking back that way, but we're looking at this. I can't think of a more inspirational place to make artwork. But I just love the fact that the home has got this extension, even pulled off the building, said something special happens here, even beyond all the special things that happen in the home. It's quite a commute, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> worth it. Yeah. The home will now be marked out of 10 with functionality, distinctiveness and clever design in mind. One score will be held back until the judges have seen all three homes when their combined scores will be revealed. It was an impressive use of space, uh, the library especially with the open shelving and obviously with the, the white walls and the, the use of all the sort of the lighter textures and colours, it really opened up the space. The office space is lovely. I work from home so I know how lovely it is to be able to retreat somewhere, to close the door and just have your own space. I'm going to give this home a 10. They've managed to make quite significant changes whilst at the same time have retained the original character of the cottage. If there was a something I would change, I think it is just the overall theme of the decor. Blue and white will forever be ship decks, uh, life belts. So it did, I suppose, jar with me a little bit. I'm gonna give this home an eight. There's hundreds of objects, there's hundreds of books, there's quite a lot of furniture, but the way that they've balanced the cluttered with the clean, it's both aesthetic and sincere. If I had been given this as a project and this person was my client and I had managed to achieve something this good, I would feel very smug.
The next home to face the judge's scrutiny is a townhouse in Falkirk. Architect Adam designed this home known as Blink Bonnie for himself, his wife and two children. The front draws inspiration from a traditional Scottish tower house, whilst the rear is inspired by a park pavilion with large windows to capture the views. When we first saw the site, I thought it was an amazing site because it was right in the middle of Falkirk. It's really green, um, so there's a canal just beside us, there's, there's woods kind of front and back. So it was this kind of green little oasis in the middle of town. We obviously, there's a lot of talking with the family what this house was going to be like. They were like, well, it better be good because the last house was great. So there was pressure suddenly. I thought, oh, these are quite um, uh, kind of picky clients I'm dealing with here. Because it's quite a small area but stacked up on three levels, it never feels as though you're rattling around an empty house, even if it's just the two of us. I wanted bits of this house to kind of delight me, you know, five years' time. I just wanted little aspects of it to still go, oh, I like that, and, you know, I'm pleased with that. This three-storey home covers nearly 2,500 square feet and includes four bedrooms, three bathrooms, a home office and contemporary features throughout. This is our favourite spot in the house, and it's because at the very top of the stairs, you come into this room and you yeah, just have this fantastic view. You can sit here, the sun goes down, sun sets over that way, and uh, it's just a really relaxing spot to be. Well, this is interesting. We have uh, what appears to be a tower house in suburbia. The scale of it is totally fine, isn't it, with the house next door? There's some quite interesting brick detailing going on. Yes. It's not all the same. It's, it's brick bonded everywhere, apart from just over there on the right. Yeah. Nice little detail, but I still think it might be quite modern on the inside. What yeah, do you reckon? Not, it's, it's not going to be folksy, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Should we take a look? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that stair's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I love, love, it. love the handrail detail. And the glass door. Ooh. Okay, lots and lots to look at. <laughs> I know it seems like really minimal, but there's actually loads to look at in here. Yeah. I love the little model. Oh. Let's look. That's something. It might be a lamp. It looks like a lantern, <laughs> doesn't it? But it's quite interesting they have this, because they have all these elements in the house which you can see in here, like the long strip windows and just the way that they've done all the kind of composition of the elements on the outside. It's a very, very minimal kitchen. How are you feeling? I'm You're just, cold, aren't you? I know. I, just, feel, I can feel it, Kate. I can feel you I bristling. just like some stuff out on display, and there's literally nothing. I don't, even, I don't even see a cookbook. I believe that things can be sort of practical and beautiful, but there's not really that much happening in here. Well, there must, there must be clutter somewhere. Yeah. What's that, well, that door there? There you go. <laughs> That's all the clutter. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. It's got everything in here. And there's the cookbook. It smells lovely. Yep. There you go. It's minimalism. You know, you strip everything back to the absolute. You have nothing on show at all, short of I don't know, very very select items. So mm -hmm. you have to put the lifestyle away in a cupboard. It, that is so convenient where that is located. It doesn't feel like a sacrifice. I'm noticing the windows, you know, in a traditional tower house, windows would have been very small and these buildings would have been defensive buildings. And we have quite different types of windows, certainly in this space. And the, particularly these tall, thin ones over here, which actually look as if they've got shutters on them. Yeah, there. I was just looking at that too. Yeah. Oh, oh look, at that. look how tall they are. Mm. That's very satisfying. Yeah. Do you know what this is reminding me of? It's making me think of the, the windows in the library, in the art school. Art school, art school library windows. Thank yeah. You. Yep, snap. <laughs> Boom! Yep. That is really, really gorgeous. I love that they're wood on the inside too, so when you close them, you're still getting this kind of warm energy in here. Yeah, absolutely. So keep the heat, keep the heat in. And it's a traditional Scottish detail as well. Yeah. Shutters and windows. Oh. Oh. Wow, what a gorgeous space. This is cosy. I like that everything's got its place. You know, the TV's slotted into a wee corner, the cabinet's put very specifically into a little nook. Yeah. Fire sitting in its own little room. 
You know, everything's been really considered in terms of where everything goes. Yeah, it feels very balanced, isn't it? Apart from, I feel like I would have liked to have seen another sort of spot for the wood on the other side of the... Oh, the symmetry? Yeah, a little bit of symmetry. So do you think it's a bit like the architect is being a dictator when they design a space so that you can only put the furniture in one specific location? Yeah, it's always the architectural dilemma that you're designing a building for someone else to live in, but it's your creation. And even worse, if you're the, you're architect, the architect and you're designing it for yourself, yeah. there's quite a lot of inner conflict going on there. Yeah, exactly. You have to live according to yourself. It's quite difficult. Yeah, but you struggle with that a lot. I do every day. <laughs> Master suite here by the looks of things. Oh, Lovely big shower room, yeah, dressing nice. room. <gasps> oh, look. Oh, seating area. What a beautiful thing to have in your bedroom. And just a seat for two. Oh, uh, favourite spot as well. <laughs> there we go. It's, re it's actually interesting because it's a completely different view from downstairs. It's like rooftops, treetops, and distance, whereas downstairs you're looking over the canal. These clothes, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, a little that... bit of privacy. Oh, there you go. It's like airplane wings. <laughs> and one thing we haven't talked about that we've seen all through the home is the collection of artwork. Yeah, there's not a lot of colour, but when it is, it's quite punchy. I find it a bit odd how the art's been displaced around the house, I must admit. I'm sort of wondering if it shouldn't all just be in one room. It's back to the discussion about the kitchen. You put it all in the one room, like the cupboard. You think they need a, an art gallery? I'd be an art gallery, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need a wee art fix. I really like the kitchen dining space. I thought it had a beautiful mixture of textures and colours. You had the shutters, which are just stunning. I can totally imagine that being a happy, unfussy family kitchen. When I went into the guest bedroom, I realised that I was missing a little bit more colour. I'm going to give this home a nine. I really appreciated the, just the ambition. It's just the, the sense that we do need to make a building that is proud and stands here and is not afraid to say, I am, I am here and I am responsible for my, my plot of the earth. And I really, really applaud that. I'm going to give this home a 10. The upper levels were definitely more personalised uh, compared to sort of the starkness of, of downstairs. But as you made your way upstairs, they definitely got more, a bit more creative, come out of their shell a little bit with the colours. I think they had great taste in sort of retro furniture, really great taste in art, and I think they could have done so much more with the kitchen space. The final contender in Perthshire and central Scotland is a semi-detached family home in Dunfermline. Textile designer Claire and her husband Kevin have transformed this suburban house into a distinctive family home packed with a variety of design influences. Us having like 70s furniture in a Georgian house, some people think it wouldn't work, but it does work. And I think the reason it works is because the height of the ceilings in these houses are just so great. They just give you that illusion of space. I think it's a family home. And I, I love it for that. But, you know, this is just an ordinary house and an ordinary street, and we've kind of made it special. It would be good to go up against some, like, really amazingly designed architecture and, and come out on top just with style. That would be good. Claire and Kevin have created a striking interior, bursting with recycled and upcycled furniture, making this modest three-bed, one-bath home a unique place to live. This is my favourite spot. Um, I like to sit here in the morning and have coffee and I like the way you can see all the way through the house and all the different colours, all the rooms. Well, this doesn't look like anything too special from the outside, but I'm thinking inside might be quite impressive. And it's a slightly quirky building. The lower dormer turns into a roof, which then turns into another dormer. And there's a, like a lampshade, oh, I think, and a is? kind of funky print pattern. So we think it's going to be quite funky inside. Quite funky. <laughs> quite funky. All right, shall we Let's see? Let's get funky. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. Ooh. Loads of pattern. Lots and lots of pattern. You could tell as soon as you came through the door that there's something going on here. It's almost mm. coming out of the walls at us, isn't it? Look at it, yeah. it's kind of grabbing us. Yeah. This yeah. is just the introduction to the music. It's about to get crescendo, I think. Ooh, retro. Pattern, oh my good chair. Oh my gosh, this place. Oh, look at that. That mantelpiece has just been arranged perfectly. Oh, it's groaning with goodies. <laughs> <laughs> groaning. I love all this retro mid-century furniture and this structured sideboard instantly caught my eye. Mm. Looks at home here, doesn't it? What I mean, to get furniture made like this these days, I mean, it costs so a expensive. Fortune. Yeah, so beautifully made. It's an interesting room, in that the original room's been altered because the door's been blocked off behind us. Yes. Uh, to presumably allow more things to sit in the room. And then the space behind me has been knocked through to open through. It's always lovely when you knock these were quite small buildings yeah. all the way through and you can get the window at the front and the window at the back and you get a much nicer sort of relationship with spaces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they really did themselves a favour. This colour on the wall with this mustard is just, it's popping. It is. <laughs> it's almost like a kind of turmeric. It's really, yeah. really intense, isn't it? Very rich. It's a great backdrop for the sort of Tretchikov prints and the printer's blocks. I mean, people shouldn't be afraid of colour. I embrace it all the time. I mean, I think it's a wonderful thing to have colour. Clearly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just these collections of things. I'm just having such throwbacks here. I remember going to people's houses and everyone had one of them, but they didn't have them like a family. You'd have one or two, but you wouldn't have... Yeah, <laughs> they have the collection. You wouldn't have a herd. I think it all ties together, doesn't it? It could be a bit cramped, but I feel like because they've opened up the space, it's really like open, it's really bright, and you can kind of move through. I'm not absolutely sure if it isn't a little bit too much. Is it too much? Yeah, but and I don't normally say that because I'm like, well, yeah, there's, there's not like enough. Yeah, you like a bit of an eclectic. Know? And it could be that that's maybe that's the problem. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm I'm feeling like there needs to be. I don't know. I don't feel like there needs to be more though. I'm I'm a, I'm a little confused. It's yeah, taken me a while to to plan. assimilate. A bit more of a modern kitchen in here, and I found the favourite spot. Shall I take a seat? Uh, Lots of wicker. Oh. Please tell me that's comfy, Kate. It's Look. so comfy. This is a really nice favourite spot because it is cosy in here. I can imagine it being quite warm. Cup of tea. It feels like a very homely little spot, and I can imagine if you guys were in the doorway, I could see right, right the way through. How's yeah, that? I can see right the way through. In fact, I can see out of the living room windows. Oh, that's good. Yeah, right through the home. I think it's quite nice to come into here and it's just got a more serene palette. Yeah. And a more connected palette. Mm hmm It's like, um, I don't know, like a sorbet after the rather intense uh, main course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What I was expecting. It's a real boudoir. I love that this uh, cabinet above the bed is above the bed. It leaves everything else kind of a bit calmer. I suppose that's almost being the bedside table, isn't it, with the cupboards yeah. and the... Yeah. And colour coordinated. I do like that. Mm -hmm. I feel very mm -hmm. satisfied looking at that. There's also quite a lot of homemade looking textile patchwork things here. And this chair that's been upcycled and painted, most amazing colours. Oh, yeah, two tone. It's more feminine. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a cliche to say that pink is feminine, but I'm not really talking about that. Mm. It's the style of the furniture. It's a little bit older. We're not in mid-century anymore. No. We're going back. And then we've got sort of florals and so on. So we're kind of going more into sort of 40s. Yeah. And so quite interesting you said this is 40s. Isn't it? If we keep going through this home, are we just going to eventually end up... <laughs> <laughs> back in time. Back in, in a cave. In a cave. <laughs> The main living space was my favourite area. It had lots of natural light and the textures in there were just beautiful. They had done such a good job with the downstairs, that sort of retro vibe that I would have thought, you know, adding it into the master bedroom would have been really, really fun. The upstairs bedroom was another one of my favourites. It was very bright, it had this sort of vintage look to it. I'm going to give this home an eight. I don't think the house has an overall colour palette, but I think that's okay. I really like the way some of the furniture has been upcycled. 
the ways that some of the chairs, they've been painted and then they've been upholstered in fabric that the homeowner has designed. I'm going to give this home a nine. I really appreciate that someone has decided to turn their home into a dream and to say, well, I will reinvest my home to bring it into this sort of quality of fantasy is just delightful. If there was something I would change, um, yeah, it's probably the fact I'm not living here. Now that the judges have visited all three homes, they can see how they compare against each other. First, Michael is revealing his score for the semi-detached home in Dunfermline. So first, we're going to have a look at Lee's Park, adorable semi-detached house with lots of interesting things inside. I gave it a nine. Kate gave it an eight. Well, I have to admit that I just loved this home. Um, it was a little journey into my past, and uh, I couldn't help but be delighted by being there, so I gave this home a nine. So that gives Lee's Park 26. Next, Anna is disclosing her score for Mouse Cottage in Strathtee. Kate, you gave that a 10. I did. And Michael, you gave it an 8. I did. I, I was completely, completely smitten. I wanted to steal the life of the person that lives there, so um, I gave it a 10. Okay. So that makes for Mouse Cottage 28. And finally, Kate is telling us her score for Blink Bonnie Tower House in Falkirk. Michael gave it a 10. Obviously. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. I gave it a nine, so. I thought it was a really impressive home. They'd made use of the, the natural light. It needed a little bit more personalization for me, so I gave it an eight. So that gives a total of 27. 27. Oh, gosh, My that goodness, really that's close. so close. That's a really, really strong region, isn't it? It is, but we have a finalist. We do have a finalist, Mouse Cottage. Yeah, a beautiful cottage in the country. Yeah, yeah. just about that. Mouse Cottage is our winner this time, but who will join it in the final and claim the title Scotland's Home of the Year? Next time, oh. the judges visit the Northern Highlands. We look at the house or the view. As the search continues for Scotland's Home of the Year.